Good morning, Leslie. Good morning. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. It's great to see everybody waving. Hi. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully you guys have taken some, some of you have taken my classes. I am a Zipform product coordinator with CAR, California Association of Realtors, uh, which for short means a Zipform trainer. So I've been teaching Zipform and technology to real estate agents for about 10 years now. So uh, I can probably answer all your Zipform questions, but I'm going to share my screen and go over some of the most common things we're getting asked about today, which are probably things that are uh, happening to you right now. So let me just share my screen real quick quick here. Okay, let me get the right screen up there. There we go. Okay, so I just want to go over a few things. Feel free to ask some questions. I'm happy to answer your questions along the way. But one of the most important things right now is to set your default signing service. We get a lot of calls of why didn't why can't I use DocuSign or how come it defaulted to something else? So in your zip form profile, I'm just going to show you where real quick where to set that. So over in the top right corner, when you hover over your photo, your agent information displays. But if you click on the photo, a menu opens up behind it and you'll go to profile and settings. Okay. So profile and settings, you'll land on the about me page here, but we're going to come all the way over here to settings. This is real important because in April, when Digital Inc. was retired, the system now doesn't ask you which signing service you want to use. You do have to come here and set it. Okay. So in the settings tab here, and then write this very first section, e-sign options. Okay, so whether you choose AuthentiSign, set your time zone, or you choose DocuSign, and then you link your account, either one is fine, but make a selection here so that way all of your signing packets will go to that service going forward and you won't have any confusion. OK, that's been coming up a lot lately. So setting your default signing service is important. And if your next thing you're going to say is, oh, I never had to do that before. Yeah, this was always here. Uh, this was always something that you had to do. But because we had the option of several signing services, uh, the system would pop up and say, hey, which one do you want to use? So now you have to come here and set that default so that it defaults to the service you want to use going forward. And then you can just close when you're done there. OK. All right, that leads me to my next thing, the forms menu. How many of you guys are using the forms menu here? Show of hands. Yes, no. Okay, I see quite a few. Yes, yeah, so it's really convenient because what you know, what I hear a lot is, oh, I just need one form. And right now that seems to be the BRBC, the buyer representation and broker compensation agreement. So people go to the forms menu and pull a form and fill it out. But let me tell you, when you come to this forms menu, the only way you're going to be able to even save your work save it, not even print, download, e-sign, nothing. But the only way you're going to be able to save your work is to create a new transaction. This is what the system is going to prompt you with. Okay. So, and then you're like, oh, well, no, I don't want to create a transaction. I just want to save. And you keep going back to save and it keeps popping up. If you're not creating a transaction from this form, it's not going to save. You won't be able to print, download, email, or e-sign. So I highly recommend, this has been a problematic area, that forms menu. So I highly recommend just going to your transactions uh, tab and creating a new transaction. So transactions, always just create a new one. It doesn't matter if you have a property address yet. It doesn't matter, you know, just create it under your client's name, create it. You can create it. Look at all these ones I have that say test purchase, test listing. Um, it doesn't have to say test, but maybe it's potential buyer, potential seller, whatever you want to create it as. Just create a transaction, pull that form in there, because then if it turns into a transaction, you already have one made and you can go forward. OK, so that's a, my my one tip is I, I do rec I do not recommend to use the forms menu. I always recommend creating a new transaction. OK, which I did mention the BRBC, the buyer representation and broker compensation agreement. That is the big uh, form right now that everybody wants to pull and get signed. And then we get the call that, hey, I don't have a property address yet. And that's OK. The BRBC is programmed to be able to print, download, email and e-sign without a property address in your transaction. OK, so right here I created it's a purchase transaction because I'm working with a potential buyer. I just put it under his name. Okay. 
When I open this transaction, I land on the summary tab here and there is no property address here, none. I don't have to enter one. I'm gonna go to the documents tab. I've got lots of documents in here, but here's the BRBC, okay? So I can fill this out. I do not have to enter the fields that prompt me for a property address. Okay, so I can skip those. Don't need a, um, let's see, where is it? I have to go to the right spot where the property address is. I think it's on one of the attached forms. It is bundled with several other forms. And please keep in mind, the reason our forms are bundled is because the main form, that BRBC, references these other forms. So rather than you having to go find the form, all these forms that go with it or that are referenced within the main document, we bundle them for you. So that's why they're bundled. But this right here, I do not have to fill out this property address. I can just click prepare signing and send it off to my client to sign. Okay, so the BRBC is programmed that you do not need a property address in your transaction. You should be able to send this for signing, print, download, uh, or email it to your client. So if you have any trouble with that, please reach out to us here at CAR. Okay. Okay, so and then since we're actually, since we're in here, I wanna show you another thing that's been a big request lately is printing sample forms. We've had so many forms cha form changes lately. Gosh, we had the, the big form change in June, uh, another form change in July. Uh, the standard form changes for, or form updates, I should say, for California Association of Realtors are June and December. Those are our two main dates that we have for form updates, but we needed that July one too. So we've had a lot of form changes, and people are wanting to print samples so that you can have them for your records or present them. I've had agents say they present them to clients uh, to look at before they send them for signing, that kind of thing. They do print with the word sample across the form. But if you want to print a sample without, again, without a property address, uh, you're going to do that back out in your transaction. So I'm going to click back here. And um, if you are prompted for this to save, I don't think I made any changes, but just in case, I am going to click yes, and then you're going to have to click this blue leave button. Okay, so don't be, you know, don't hit cancel when that comes up, say leave, and that'll take you back out to your uh, transaction here. So if you want to print a sample without a property address, you just want to maybe create a test transaction so you can print all your sample forms, that's fine. But you're going to do that here in the blue all forms menu. So I'm in the documents tab of my transaction. Okay. I'm going to click that blue all forms menu. I'm going to find the library, first of all. Okay. Hopefully it's California Association of Realtors that you're looking in, but you can click that drop down arrow and switch libraries. Okay. For any form. And then I'm going to hover over the form that I want the sample of, and I'm going to click that blue drop down arrow. Okay. And then you're going to select print sample. There's two ways to print a sample. I'm going to show you the other way in just a moment, but you're going to select print sample and it's going to open right here in your browser as a PDF. And then right over here on the right, I've got download. I've got print. I can save it as a PDF. So uh, if you want any sample forms, I did not need a property address in there, but you're going to go through that blue all forms menu in the documents tab of your transaction. Okay. When you're done, just close this window. This opened as a window on top of the browser. So when you're done, just close that window and my transaction's still back here. If for some reason you've navigated away from this page here and you come to this page, please know your transaction is still open. So be sure to hover over your browser icon. If you're on a PC, that uh, hover over your browser icon in the taskbar. If you're on a Mac, you're going to click the window tab up in the top. Uh, it's at the top left. And at the bottom of the window tab, that will show you your, it'll say transaction zip form edition. It'll show you the window that's open. So here is my transaction is still open. So we're running into that as well, where people have multiple sessions of the same form or same transaction open, and they're like, hey, my data didn't save. And that's because when the system notices that there's more than one session of the same either transaction or form open, it doesn't know where to save the data, so it just doesn't do anything. It'll still prop, pop up and say saved on your, on your screen, but... Uh, it actually won't save the data. So be sure you're always, you know, checking that browser icon down there. You see, I have three sessions of my browser open. This one has my browser tabs. This one is my Zoom. And this one is my transaction. So always check your browser to see if the transaction is still open behind it. Okay. 
All right, but again, if you wanna print that sample form, uh, whoops, there we go. It's gonna be the all forms menu if you wanna print a sample without a property address. If I wanna print a sample form and have a property address in the transaction, then I can do that here in the, in the, the form editor. So here's the form, I'm gonna check the box. And I'm also gonna to go to the print menu, okay? Just like the all forms. And I'm gonna cl cl uh, click print sample, but watch what happens. Okay, there it is. So yes, it does, This the BRBC is gonna open because I don't have a property address in there, but any other form, and when I go through that uh, form editor to do that print sample, any other form is gonna pop up with an error message that says enter a valid property address, okay? So printing sample, okay, actually here, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna close out and now it looks like I'm out of my transaction. Again, if I just hover over my browser icon, this is huge, there it is, it's still open. Okay, so I'm gonna open, I'm gonna click on that window there. So really be careful with having those, uh, when you close out of one thing, like I said, you send a signing packet, it looks like you signed out of your account and you have to sign back in again, but you don't. Check your browser icon, okay? All right, and then now that since we're in the forms, uh, the form editor here, I want to give you guys a couple of tips because I know, you know, not everybody's in and out of their zip form account all day. I'm a zip form trainer, so I am. But if you are, if this is all new for you, let me just give you a quick little tour. Um, so maybe it'll help clarify what some of these buttons do in here and what, what works for you. A lot of the choices in the form editor are about preference. It's what you prefer. Stick to the process that is convenient for you, even if it involves more clicks than anybody else. It doesn't matter. When you're under you know, pressure to write an offer or take a listing, you're going to want to stick to the process that is comfortable for you. Okay. But let me just show you how the, the form editor works. Right up at the top here, I've got the name of my transaction, which I can edit if I would like to, but there's the name of my transaction. Okay. Over here, I land, when you open the form editor, you land on this forms tab here on the far right. Okay. This is where you're going to spend 99% of your time. You've got two sections here, the workspace. Okay. And the grab from transactions section down here, the workspace, any document that's here in the workspace, I can view over here on the left. I can edit those documents and view. OK, if I need another document, I don't have to exit the form editor. I come down to the grab from transactions section down here and just click the plus sign to move it up to the workspace. So the whole idea is to move your documents into the workspace so that you can view and edit them over on the left. OK, so let me move a few documents up there. And again, I'm just clicking the plus sign. You can click and drag the dots here on the left side, but I find that I end up highlighting the whole page. So I tend to just click that plus sign on the right. OK, now I've got all these forms in here. I can just jump from form to form. Here's my addendum. OK, I'm going to type some stuff in my addendum. Great. Let's see what else. I've got my Avid. Yep, I'm going to make a few notes here. Perfect. OK. I've had people say, oh yeah, that's how my last description went for my, <laughs> on my <oven. laughs> Um, Okay, and then let's go uh, the cover sheet. If you use a cover sheet, great. If you don't, then use the parties tab. That's either one is fine, your preference. Okay, it's not required. The BRBC, okay, um, I don't even have my people in here yet. I didn't type Joe Smith. There we go. So again, I can just click on document to document. I can, you know, make all my edits. You can use the scroll bar if you like. I, I tend to click on the document and then scroll to whatever page, but here's that scroll bar. If you wanna scroll through all these pages, that's there for you too, okay? Any doc, if you wanna keep the workspace clean, that is completely up to you. Let's say I don't need this document anymore. I can click the X and it'll just drop back down here to the grab from transaction. So. I don't tend to clean up the workspace. I just work on what I need to work on and move on. So that is up to you. Again, just your preference. But I do want to show you. Now, the next thing is, first of all, I do recommend, highly recommend clicking save from time to time. You don't have to, but if you're not clicking save, then you need to click that back button when you go to exit the form editor because that's going to prompt you to save your changes. If you simply X out of your browser and you didn't save, chances are that work you just did is gone, okay? So be careful. The back button is a must when you wanna exit the form editor and go back to the transaction. The back, you have to use that back button. Okay, but since we're in here, you wanna start your signing. 
That's actually the next thing that people, there's there's like five ways to start your signing inside your zip form transaction. And again, it's really just up to you what your preference is. Right in here in the form editor, there is two ways. There is the pen icon here in the workspace and there is the prepare signing button up here at the top. So let me just tell you the difference between these two and you get to pick. All right, the prepare signing button is programmed to take every single document in the workspace and put it into a signing packet. OK, but regardless if you're using DocuSign or AuthentiSign, you will have the option to clean up those forms, add more forms and, you know, rearrange the order, all that good stuff on the next screen. So if you're just in a hurry and you want to get started and you don't mind doing a little cleanup, click prepare signing, get started and know that you'll just do a little cleanup on the next screens. OK, so the prepare signing button is programmed to take every single document here in the workspace, including my cover sheet, which I don't want to send. OK, so but again, I can do that cleanup. The pen icon, as well as the other icons here in the workspace, responds to only the items that are checked. So if I want to send this document, this document and this document, I can check the boxes for the documents both in the workspace and in the grab from transaction section. And when I click the pen icon, it is just going to take those selected documents. OK. So it's really up to you, whichever way works for you. Sometimes I go back and forth. I use both, honestly. <laughs> if I'm in a hurry, I click this and then I do the cleanup. If I don't feel like doing the cleanup, then I check the boxes and click the pen. OK, um, most of the features out in your transaction are also here in the form editor. I can add forms for my form libraries. OK, it's right there. Form libraries. I just click the add button and you just click add next to the form that you want. OK, I can use MLS Connect and Record Connect. That is under the Listing Info tab. So right there, the Im I know it says Import, but under there, there Import Listing is MLS Connect. Import Tax Record is Record Connect. OK, uh, let's go back to Forms. Oh, and if you close this out and you're like, oh my gosh, where did that menu go? It's the Forms tab way over here. Just click Forms, OK, and it'll take you right back. All right, and if this is if the screen is too small for you, like this, the, the print on here is pretty tiny, you know, and depending on your uh, the screen size for your device, that might be even smaller, right? So over here on the left, you have a zoom in, zoom out, and fit to width. So if I just click that plus sign, okay, let me go back up. Here we go. I'm gonna click the plus sign a few more times. There we go, and made it larger, and I have a scroll bar here, and then if I want to zoom back out, I can just click the minus or Click the drop down in the middle, and I'm just going to go back to fit to width, and that'll just fit it back on my screen. Okay. Right in the corner. And I see there's some questions. Is there, you want me to take some questions while we're in here? Since, well, yeah, Leslie, it's Mark Anthony. On, on this uh, section, I had lost a document because I didn't save it. I didn't see a, a prompt. Is it a pop up mm -hmm. or? How, how, how do we, when, when we try to save it? Um, yeah, the save save button is right up here at the top right. So if you oh. were familiar with the classic form editor, save and back were over on the left, but now they're on the top right. So the save button is here. If you don't click save, but you, you should be always clicking the back button to exit the form editor, and that would also prompt you to save. Okay, sorry about that. And then... Um, uh, let, let's say, um, let's say I, I have to walk away from my desk, get a phone call, get kind of tied up. Is there a timeout on this? Great question. I'm so glad you brought that up because your zip form account will always time out in, uh, in, after one hour. So remember my zip form account, let me go back here. It's, it's back here, you know, I'm, I'm signed in to like to car.org and I have zip form open, right? So my zip form account times out after an hour, but the form editor will not. It sits open forever, actually. Uh, so I don't like to tell people that, but it does. It does sit open. And the reason I do like to actually make sure you do know that is because if I have left this here and I come back, let's say later today or even tonight, and this is still open, I'm like, oh yeah, okay. I'm just gonna pick back up and start working on my documents. Uh, and I hit save. It's probably not gonna save my changes. That's what also is happening. It's not gonna save my changes because my zip form account already timed out and now it doesn't know where to save this to. 
So yeah, the form editor will sit open as long as you want it there. So I do caution people, if you have to walk away, just click that back button. And if it, it's, you see it didn't prompt me, so that means I already saved my work. Uh, just click the back button and go back out here. And then when you're ready, just you know click on the form because this, this screen will time out after an hour. And then that way I don't have the form editor sitting open with my form that you know I haven't finished yet. So great question. Any other questions I can answer for you guys? I have a few more things to show you, but I am happy to answer whatever questions you're experiencing right now, you know, issues, things. I have another question. Sure. You know how uh, I use DocuSign, but every once in a while on the receiving end, I'll get a AuthentiSign through my- AuthentiSign, yes. Does it also work on your phone to sign from on, I know DocuSign does, but I don't know about the other one. I've never used yes. Yes, a lot of, yeah, authentic sign. You get that email invitation on your phone. You'll click, in the email invitation is a button that's labeled start signing. You'll click start signing. And uh, yeah, anybody can sign. I've seen a lot of agents and clients sign on their phone and it works just fine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And right now, you guys, if you are using the mobile version of ZipForm, uh, it's under construction a little bit. So there is a ZipForm mobile companion that is available for uh, iOS and Android. Right now, it has been taken out of the App Store for iOS. It is still available for Android. There is some functionality issues. So what we're just asking you to do is go into the browser icon on your mobile device and sign in to car.org. And it'll look at your, it, it'll fit to the screen and work just like the mobile app. But like I said, the mobile app is actually under, we're doing a little bit of work on it, or Lone Wolf is, I should say, uh, doing some work on it. So um, yeah, just go in. If you're going to use ZipForm on your phone, just open your browser icon and go to your, go to car.org and sign in and it'll work just like the mobile app. Okay. That's okay. Funny. Yeah. Um, where is the tutorial of all of this? Is there a uh, click on? I need to. <laughs> yes. Let, let me show you. We have lots of training for you guys. So on the card, let me just go back to the main page here. So on car.org, okay, car.org, if you go to Transaction Center, this is going to have every, all, the, all the guides, videos, everything about everything, we like all the stuff we just talked about. Uh, Transaction Center here at the top left. In the middle of the page underneath transactions, zip form edition, click on training and support. Okay. This training and support page, this is the page that me and my team, we monitor this and we have everything set up here, right here, the button free training. These are our webinars, please sign up. You can come in and watch the re uh, previous recordings. You can register for future classes. We offer the same five classes every month. So you'll see the basics, advanced tools, maximizing efficiency and productivity, digital signatures and office hours, which is a live Q and A. But you're thinking, oh, I've already taken that class. I don't need to take it again. We, there is so much change going on. Please feel free to sign up for these over and over again because we're always going to be covering the newest features and functions within ZipForm. And if you can't attend live, that's okay. You'll get the recording in your email. So I encourage you to, to register for all of these. Let me just go back to that training and support page because I'll show you everything is on here. We've got the webinars here and then right down here under support and training, there's register for a webinar, watch a recording. We have a YouTube playlist called Zip Tips with the Zip Guys. And yes, I'm a Zip Guy. Um, and this is a quick link to that playlist. So those are short one to two minute videos of almost every function in Zip Form, including a lot of what we just talked about. So that's probably going to be the quickest uh, demo where you get kind of a live demo and just a short one to two minute video will show you how to do it and you can be on your way. We've also posted some of our most requested videos here. There is Forms Tutor. Forms Tutor, I will tell you, Forms Tutor does uh, actually show you uh, different forms and you can find explanations for different paragraphs within forms. It is being updated right now with all those form changes. I will tell you, not all the latest forms are in there. So uh, you can check it out, but it's just, no, we, we, are, we are working to get the forms, uh, the newest forms in there and the explanations, okay? Uh, down here, some FAQs, again, just some stuff that people ask for a lot. The new form editor, here's a guide, 
Okay. If you'd like the video, that's going to be on the, the zip tips playlist. Zip community, if you're using the share function, there's a guide and a video. Digital signatures, there's authentic sign guide. I am working on a DocuSign one. I will have that here for you. Um, zip for mobile. Again, this is the this is showing you how to use your uh, browser, I, uh, the browser app on your phone. The broker edition down here is our customer contact center. This is where you guys should be calling if you have any zip form questions at all. And that's also where I can be reached if you call our contact center. They know me. You can even just say, can I talk to Leslie? They'll transfer you to me. Uh, but they we they are very well versed on zip form. If they can't answer your questions, then they'll reach out to me, Ed and Jackson, and I'll give you guys our, our contact information in just a moment. Also, the legal hotline is on this page. And if you want to contact Lone Wolf directly, Lone Wolf is the owner of Zipform. Uh, there's their email or this link here that says knowledge base will take you to their website. And I've had some agents say after hours, they like the chat feature where they can chat with a support uh, technician. So this page, that, that training and support page, this has everything. Um, and we have pretty much a guide for everything that you want to do. I, I do the step-by-step -step guides. Jackson does all the zip tip videos. So we have lots of resources for you. And anybody that wants to email me, I'm happy to just email all this to you. <laughs> That's fine too. Um, so yeah. All right. Any other questions I can answer for you before I bring up some, our contact information for the team here at CAR? I'm back here too. Oh, on authentic sign, how do you know if the people have signed it or not? Oh, authentic sign, yeah. So you should be getting an email notification that says signing updated, and it'll tell you who has opened the signing or completed their signing, which client that you've sent it to. And at the end, it'll uh, you'll get an email notification that says signing complete, which goes out to you and your clients with the, the completed PDF attached. Let's say if one has signed, the other one has not signed it. Can we resend the document again? Yes. So that you, or the other guy has to sign again. Or we can yeah. resend it to the person who has not signed, correct? Yes, you can resend. Let me go back and let me go into a different transaction here because you can resend um, and you just go to the e-sign tab. If you're using AuthentiSign and you need to resend a document, just go to the e-sign tab in your transaction up here in the gray bar. Okay, this is going to show you all the packets you've sent. And of course, I pick, wait, let's see, is it done loading? Did I pick one that I don't have packets on? Hold on. It's spinning a little bit today. Let me see here. I think it was this one. Let me try this one. There we go. So yeah, so this, do you see how this one is AuthentiSign and it's got a sent uh, status right there. These other ones that say in progress, that's DocuSign. It's in the bottom corner there. But if I want to resend a packet, so just click on it. Anyone, whoops, anyone that does not have a green check mark in this approved column, when I come up here to action items and resend, not reset, resend invitations, that's going to resend it to anyone that doesn't have a green check mark in this approved column. There'll be a green check mark in the authenticated column here when the client opens the invitation. Thank you. Okay, but resend invitations is right there under action items. Okay. And if you're using DocuSign, there's no, 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 either one is fine. You get to choose. But once you send an envelope using DocuSign, you don't track it here in your zip form account. You're going to track it in your DocuSign account on the web. That's where you would go if you had to resend it, correct an email address, correct a signing tag, anything like that. You'll do all that tracking in your DocuSign account on the web. But for AuthentiSign, I track everything here in the eSign tab of my transaction and in this envelope. Okay. I have one more question. Sure. Uh, moving forward, uh, I this is my iPad Pro, right? Mm -hmm. I, I can use that. I used to go to m.zipformonline.com. It would have the portfolio. It was a lot easier to sign, but like for the last year, you said it's been gone. What what do you see iOS wise on the iPad? Uh, so you should still be able to use your browser icon. Yeah, you should still be able to use the browser icon on your iPad and go to car.org. So you you won't have to do the M, you know, all that. Um, well, actually, when you said, are you signing into zipformplus.com or to car.org? 
No, I'm in car and or I'll go to M dot zip form and it'll, it'll show up the portfolio version, like the iPhone version. And it's okay. easier. I don't need my readers. I don't need to expand. It makes it right. easier. So I like the M dot zip form online.com for the yeah. iPhone. But if it's going away, it's going away. I'll just. It's not it. going away. It's just not going to be relaunched until October. Okay. So it, it we had some issues with the app earlier this year in April. They corrected those and it came back in June with some other issues that mainly affects uh, the um, Apple iPhone users. And so they took it down out of the app store. Uh, it's going to be relaunched again in October, but they had to do some reprogramming with it. So uh, for right now, we're just asking everybody to use your browser icon. And I tried it on my iPad. I don't have the one you have. I have just a you know, regular iPad, but um, using my browser and logging into car.org was completely fine. It worked perfectly. Yeah. Thank okay. You. All right. Okay, everyone, any other questions I can answer about ZipForm? Anything else that comes to mind? One last question. Sarah. Sure. Uh, you mentioned bundles. I've seen the bundles. Can you still do templates? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, I do recommend. I highly recommend your templates. Yes. If you want, I know uh, some, I've had some agents saying, oh, I want to create a template for like uh, the BRBC or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, you can create as many templates as you want for whatever you want. Yeah. Templates okay. are here for you. Mm -hmm. right. Absolutely. One other thing, let me just go back into this one real quick. I want to go, I want to show you one other thing with the form editor, the form editor, because you guys probably have seen this screen before, right? This pop up and everybody's like, ah, a pop up. I'm just going to close that. Yeah, don't close it. Let me tell you what this is. The system actually remembers the forms that I had in the workspace the last time I was in this transaction, which is a great tool because then I don't have to go select all these forms one by one. So if you would like the system to put all these forms, including the form I just clicked on, back in the workspace, so I don't have to pick them all one by one, then click open my previous workspace. If you just wanna see the form that you clicked on in your transaction in the workspace, then click start a new workspace. It is really just your preference. It does not matter which one you choose. I tell agents, don't let this slow you down. Just pick one and move on. That It's not going to limit any type of features or functionality regardless of what you choose. So if you want all those forms back in the workspace, just click open my previous workspace. And then there you go. I can work on that same set of forms. I have a question. Yeah. MPX, if we do it in car update, the template is going to update it too, or just? Yes, yes, great question. So, and actually I am just, I just wrote a guide on creating and updating your templates. So the car forms will update automatically inside your templates. Actually all forms should update automatically inside your templates. Uh, and the only exception to that is if the car form had a name change or acronym change. So for instance, I think the um, modification of or modification of terms has now split into two documents, one's for listing and one's for something else. I can't remember what it was, but uh, so that form did actually have a name change. So what you would need to do, let me just go back out. You would just go into your template, remove the old form, and then just simply reselect the new form. So that if you needed to do a manual update because of a form name change, let me show you. I'm going to go in here. Here's my template. Okay. Oh, if this ever happens to you guys where it loads and you're like, oh my gosh, where are all my documents? Look for this little blue back arrow. I don't know why this is, I've reported this to Lone Wolf, but this happens to me a lot. It just, it's not that your documents are gone. Just look for that little blue back arrow next to select all. Okay, there they are. <laughs> There's all my documents. Uh, so let's say that there was, um, let's say, uh, do I have the modification of terms in here? I do not. Okay. But all you would do is you would remove the form. So I'm going to click that drop down arrow for the more actions menu and delete. Yes. And then I would just go add the form back in. So go to the all forms menu here on the right. There we go. 
and it was this form here. So literally all I'm doing is removing it and reselecting it from the list, and that will ensure I have the most uh, up-to-date form if it had a name change. But otherwise, all of this should update automatically for you in your templates. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, I am, let me just put one more thing on the screen here and then I will wrap it up for you guys. There we go. There we go. So this is our team here. Uh, we're the three zip form experts. Uh, there is my uh, email. Feel free to jot it down, email me directly. I'll get back to you. I'll help you with your zip form questions. And like I said, if you call the customer contact center and they can't answer your zip form question, then they'll pass it along to me, Ed and Jackson. So I am a zip form product coordinator. Also on our team, like I said, Jackson Baudelaire, he is our senior uh, transaction and training supervisor. And he does all those great zip tip videos for you. Uh, they're awesome. I hope you guys check those out. And then our leader and manager, Ed Charbonneau. So uh, feel free to jot down our contact information here. We're happy to help you. Uh, and like I said, if you call the co uh, contact center, we're reachable that way too. Thank you so much, Wendy. We really appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. A lot of great, great information. Um, Thank you so much again for giving us all